Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to The Watch. I'm Dan Ma and these look suspiciously like the headlines. Another month, another Modern Warfare 3 Elite content drop. If you've been feeling shortchanged on the Spec Ops side of things, two new missions are available for you and a comrade to obsessively attempt to triple star. Black Ice sees you getting cosy on a snowmobile as you speed your way down towards a Russian diamond mine and then exploderize it from the inside, while Negotiator is a breach-heavy hostage rescue operation through Indian city streets. On the multiplayer side, Black Box has you battling among the wreckage of a luxury hillside mansion after Air Force One has made an unscheduled landing in the middle of it. Now, I know that you non-elite types are feeling slightly left out by all of these content drops, so it gives me a small degree of pleasure to tell you that the first content collection will be available for all to buy on Xbox Live from the 20th of March. The collection contains everything I've just mentioned, plus the new multiplayer maps Overwatch, Piazza and Liberation. Now for some, the mere mention of the names Bella, Edward and Jacob is enough to send them into the sort of frothing state that would inspire most vets to recommend a lethal injection. Others just think the Twilight Saga is perfectly entertaining fair, and others haven't watched it and never will and tend to get as frothy as the first lot for very different reasons. Now, I'm talking to the first two groups now, so Group 3, I'll be back with you shortly. With the trailer for the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2, the fifth and final instalment of the series currently doing the rounds, it's the perfect time to catch up on what has gone before. Thankfully, Zune has just added Breaking Dawn Part 1 to its ever-expanding catalogue, which also includes the previous three episodes of glittery vampire romancing. I'll spare you the details, largely because I haven't watched it and never will, but Team Edward and Team Jacob members will undoubtedly find plenty to like and throw... No? And finally, if your mum's anything like mine and thinks that flowers and chocolates are disappointing Mother's Day presents somehow, plonk her in front of the TV, boot at your Xbox and give her the run of the dedicated Xbox Live Mother's Day experience. In it, you'll find games to suit even the most extreme novices, or if even that's too much effort, there's a selection of films and music for them to sit back and enjoy while you do the washing up for once. For the last four summers, Xbox 360 has taken residence on the beautiful Balearic party island of Ibiza, teaming up with the Ibiza Rocks Hotel for Ibiza Rocks, a season of open-air performances from the cream of live musical talent. Previous years have seen the likes of Chase and Status, Rizzle Kicks, Too Many DJs, Tiny Temper and Mark Ronson rescue revelers from drowning in a sea of house music, and the recently unveiled lineup for Ibiza Rocks 2012 promises to do the same job this year. Red-headed award magnet Ed Sheeran kicks off 16 balmy weeks of essential gigs on the 6th of June, which will also include turns from Kaiser Chiefs, Block Party, Kasabian, Professor Green, New Order, Two Door Cinema Club, as well as return visits from Chase and Status and Tiny Temper. Xbox fans who've been forced to part ways with their console can temper their withdrawal symptoms by paying a visit to the Xbox Social Room, where you can get some practice in for later on Dance Central 2, or just let off some steam with Gears of War 3. Although Ibiza Rocks Sunny Sonic Assault is still over two months away, there are dedicated Ibiza Rocks music and video playlists available on Zoom for you to get straight into the spirit of summer right now. For the latest on the Ibiza Rocks 2012 lineup and further details on Ibiza Rocks Hotel, head to IbizaRocks.com. If all goes to plan, we might even see you there. This year saw possibly the strongest Xbox Live Arcade house party lineup ever, thanks to the killer quartet of Warp, Alan Wake's American Nightmare, Nexwiz, or however you say it, and I Am Alive. That's why I thought I'd ask you which one is your favourite of the bunch. Stevie JB has a great idea for a future Mass Effect 3 add-on. What? Because I love the cute little alien. We should give you a raise in Mass Effect. Covert Sandwich has got to speed it up and then slow it down because he's having trouble making his mind up. Uh, Alan, Alan Wake? No. I'm alive. No, no, wait a minute, I changed my mind. Uh, Alan Wake, definitely. Maybe? No. I'm alive. Yeah, no. Yeah, 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 it is. We'll have whatever Sabrina Jones is having. I am alive. My inner child will surely come out and play in this decaying and hazardous world. Let me climb around in dirty destruction. We completely sympathise with Seb Bowyer's plight. Next to his... Ne next to his... Ne next to his... Uh, because it's fun, fast-paced, and I can never pronounce its name properly. Nick Sadler, 1993, has gained some unfortunate transferable skills from one house party title. Alan Wake's American Nightmare helped me write my CV. Now I'm an expert in fetal positioning and bedwetting, because I wasn't before honest. For suffering for someone else's art, Nick has bagged himself this quite sexy Mass Effect 3 vault. Now, the topic for next week's show is entirely hypothetical. Star Wars is being remade. Who's directing it? 
If your choice of visionary for a rebooted far, far away galaxy is particularly inspired, you'll learn yourself this rather nifty media remote. And that's your lot for this week's show. Join me next week for more of the same, only different. Bye.